Check my shoes off. Why are you smelling my shoes? Sorry, my computer's going back to Wi-Fi. I figured I'd just let it do its automatic change. Because it's like so much more efficient. Hey, look. Hey, look. I think I'm going to go eat breakfast. This is an interesting conversation, though. This is an interesting conversation, though. Okay, kill that. I have to put y'all back in. I have to put y'all back in your... Wait, what? I have to get this... See, this thing died. Ow. Oh, they're they're really cool. They are super cool speakers. Yeah, they have a USB attachment on them too. Yeah, I really like them a lot. But you know, I'm kind of a sound guy. The sound stuff like makes me freak out. See how good I can get with doing this while you guys are still, while you're still here. <laughs> I gotta get. I'm sorry for the noise. The price tag on good sound, yeah, it's pretty spendy. I won't lie. Yeah, good sound costs money. <laughs> it does. I would rather have good sound than good picture every time. It does. It definitely does hurt. All right. Of course I go longboarding. Yeah, I, I went longboarding with people on the stream. Yeah, it was really fun. I'll take you long, actually, longboarding is one of the things I need to test with my gimbal mount so I can wear it. There's a thing you can get to wear your gimbal. Yeah, I love longboarding. I need some breakfast. I make some breakfast. I wonder if I flipped it around if it went all the way down. Probably not. No, it's not electric. No, God no. No. It is not electric. They have them though. They they have electric ones. Wait. They are a pain. Walter Mitty? No. I don't know what Walter Mitty is. What's Walter Mitty? Yeah, NVIDIA is, yeah, they're just a problem, they're going to be a problem.
here. But, okay, but here's the thing. You can't do machine learning with an AMD card. Do you know what I'm saying? You you can't you can't do you can't do machine learning with AMD. The Secret Life of Walter Moody. Yeah, I should watch that. I need to put that in my list. I need to put it in my list. Of things to watch. I think ML is going to be huge. Yeah. I I won't get anything that can't support CUDA. And I didn't make those rules. I think it's sad, but I go longboard in Iceland. <laughs> you never know. I just might. Tell me I should try this. This is collagen. I don't know. Do you guys know anything about this? They've been telling me that I should try it. What? You have 768 CUDA cores? Fuck. I hate you. Your favorite beverages. Shit. I don't know, I'll try one. See what it tastes like. The ten fifty has seven hundred and eight good cores. Fuck. Yeah. I mean people think they're just for gaming, but no. But this is my my recipe. I'm like super hungry. I think when I get hungry, I get really bloated. Do you guys get that way? Like, when I get really, really hungry, I get, like, super bloated. I don't know why. I think I'm, I think I'm pre-diabetic. But I, I don't, I'm not, I don't eat like a diabetic. Cheap AMD card. Yeah. That's pretty good. I don't know how big a, I don't know how big a machine learning card you have to have. I mean, if you're just in school, you don't need to know a lot, right?
Yep. NVIDIA has a patent on CUDA itself. You can't even... I can't even do anything without CUDA. That's insane. You have to have CUDA for everything. I don't know how the industry let that happen. But yeah, you... I don't know how they did. Nobody does machine learning on anything but CUDA these days. No one. There's no, there's no like AMD library. Hey, nu nuclear power. <laughs> what a name. What a great name. Yeah, I don't know. The CUDA, the CUDA course thing is a thing. Well, I want to know. Yeah, I agree. What, what I want to know is... Number one, is there any competitor to CUDA? I don't think there's any competitor at all. I, I don't I don't think there's like even I don't think there's even a project in the works to compete against it. Yeah, I know. And number two is CUDA being used for games. You know what, Audacious Ferris, I completely agree. I completely agree. That might seem like a sort of conservative capitalist position, but I totally agree. It's a free market. In that particular case, NVIDIA has kicked ass. They have played a very, very good competitive game. And and I'm unaware of them abusing any any anything. Any, any less than any other company ever has. I think that you're right. Void, I think you got onto something. I think you're right. A good company would not patent it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> In America, if you're an S corporation and you invented a CUDA core like that and you didn't patent it, It'd be against the law because the S corporation by law has to act in the best interest of making profit for shareholders. That's the law. So, I don't know. The only way you can do what you want to do is to do what's called a B corporation, which just barely came out. Dude, that's the law. It's called an S corporation. C corps are even worse. No, C corp, C corp, C corp is a bad one. S corporation is same as a C corp, except for it works better for small people. I had an S corp. The laws in America are stacked against you know free and open source software. They just are. And tell you the truth, I have really mixed feelings about it because I'm not against... I, I've been an open source advocate for a long time. And... I know, that's what I was just saying. An E core. There's no... No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, B core. I thought... I misread. No, no evil core. <laughs> no. No, I'm going to make coffee. I think, I think Google's going to make a chip to compete. It's just a matter of time. That's what I think.
fact, you can make here. You could you can make the case that that they have all figured this out, right? The big companies. The big companies have figured out that if they want to compete <clears throat> in the next 10 years, they have to have their own silicon. They're going to have to control the silicon because, because they're all getting taken advantage of by the people who own the silicon. So the Google Pixel has its own Google chip in it. Apple has their M1. NVIDIA's got their own CUDA cores. They're all fighting over silicon now. That's where the fight is. The fight isn't in the browser anymore. The fight is about who owns the silicon. Because if they can control their own silicon, they can do whatever they want. I think I'm going to do decaf. when you're saying with the tensor thing I like what you said there the problem is this isn't going to be as good right I mean I think they they could do it yeah yep Ferris Ferris I'm I'm totally in agreement with what you're saying I completely agree plus I like your position on competitiveness you know honestly people people will not like me for saying this but I think Nvidia played the game perfectly I mean think about it yeah somebody else would have done it exactly so this is what Nvidia did NVIDIA says, okay, Linux is going to dominate the industry. We know that. So they said, look, Linus, I know we're not going to open our stuff up, but they ended up, they ended up making drivers for Linux that were good. Now, you can complain about the drivers for Linux and do all this stuff, but the NVIDIA drivers for Linux are pretty damn good. And the CUDA shit is making them have to make the drivers even better. So... Even though they're proprietary drivers, they're making them. And there's AMD and other, and actually AMD's always made them. But like, they could have decided to just not support Linux hardware at all. They could have said, we're not gonna make drivers at all, fuck you. But they didn't. And that's why I think they're smart. They kept control of their stuff, but they also provided kick-ass support for Linux. And that played into the sort of Mark Shuttleworth's canonical idea, which was, I don't give a shit about your proprietary obsession, anti-proprietary obsession. I'm going to just make this work, and we're going to make money, a lot of money using this. And that's how come Ubuntu is the dominant cloud platform right now, Ubuntu and Red Hat. Because they said, you and your purest, you know, can't put anything proprietary on Linux, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get in bed with the devil, blah, blah, blah. I said, fine, you you go off and play your little hippie game. Meanwhile, we're going to get business done. And you might not like it, but, but NVIDIA, NVIDIA played the game perfectly. They played it perfectly because they didn't. Yeah, yeah. Wayland is shit. Wayland is absolute shit. I'll never use it. I don't care about the code base. It's not compatible. You're going to tell me I'm going to like throw all of my X applications out? Every time I play on Wayland, I die. Something happens. Something goes wrong. I, I wish it was better than that. It wasn't for me.
Wayland is like one of these projects that wants to be all that. It's like Container D or Creo. And then it just doesn't pull, it doesn't do it. It doesn't actually do it. X11 is shit too, absolutely. So, why I have new shit? I mean, you can just use the old shit because it's all shit. <laughs> I have, I'm, I'm support the Wayland project. I'm all for them trying to fix it, but it's not anywhere near there yet. It's not going to be there for at least five years. You're right, Russ. Fuck you. You know what? I would support a rewrite. <laughs> Dude, if they want to rewrite Rust, somebody told me they're rewriting all of Gnome and Rust. Anybody hear about that? Somebody said they're rewriting all of Gnome. I'm writing Rust, listen to me. Of course you are. I'm not offended, people. Guys, you get the wrong impression of me. I am not offended by people who quote in Rust. I just think they're irrelevant. <laughs> you can call whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I'm, I don't dislike you because you're quoting in Rust. Unless you tell me what to do. You start telling me what to do, then yeah, we got a problem. So how are you going to prove to me? Prove, prove to me that it has value. You know? Yeah, Papa has to do another Chrome thing. When, when I found out that most of GNOME desktop was running CSS, did you find out about that? That was insane to me. I could not believe that somebody let that happen. I heard that somebody left a project over it. The entire GNOME desktop moved to CSS. Yeah, I saw, I found some CSS in the in there and I was like, what the fuck is this doing in here? They basically they basically turned a desktop into Electron. <laughs> Not really, but Yeah. See this is in style sheets. I could not believe it. Dude, I'm telling you, I know. I could I I still I was in there, what was I doing? I was I was in fucking around the desktop somehow. I was like trying to fix some stuff, and all of a sudden I found this style sheet. Hey, LTN Bob, how's it going? How are you? How are you and yours? Happy Thanksgiving week to come. The GNOME core code base is still C. Front end of those Node.js, yeah. But see that that blew me away. No, I saw that and I could not believe it. I could not believe it. That that that. And then, and then I started researching it, and somebody, somebody said that they, that they lost developers over it. It was like a huge rift in the project. Yeah, GNOME has Node.js. It's Node.js and CSS. Uh huh. I know. That even got me to question it. I was like, really? But it's not just JS, I think it's CSS too. Yeah. No, I know. The iOS UI, I think it's JS. I think it is too. There's a lot of UIs that do that. Yeah. It does make me wonder if they're using if, what, because if they're doing that, what are they doing? They're basically doing Electron. Seriously. It's like, they, I'm not kidding. I think they did the same thing as Electron. I think they embedded the V8 engine in the desktop. I mean, that just means QT is gone. Right, GTK? GTK is gone. Qt is gone. QT. But I heard that QT pulled their, pulled their support for Linux. I heard that might be the reason they did it. Did anybody else read that? I read that the QT project, which has had this like contractual 
open source license thing going on. And um, yeah, GTK WebKit. I heard that they pulled the license finally because QT is a huge company now. They, they made the people who made QT decided to become proprietary. Like, like hippies who decided to become lawyers later. <laughs> like boomer, boomer hippies who decided to become millionaire lawyers. I think GTK would have been good. I'm I'm leaving Popolis. But I'm going, I'm staying with, I don't know if I'm going to stay with Gnome, actually. It, what's Cinnamon? Cinnamon's Gnome, right? Actually, I just, I wrote a blog about this recently. I'm, I don't want to be, ru I don't want to rush into it because I don't want to risk it. I don't, I don't want to blow it up. You know, the last, the last Pop OS change, the last Pop OS change where, um, you think Cinnamon got off Gnome? I think they did too. Cinnamon's my favorite distro. It always has been. And Pop OS came pretty damn close. But then Pop OS, they fucked with Pop OS. Yeah. Yeah, I was there. There was a massive drama when that happened. I was there. Linus, Linus Tech Tips. Yeah, Linus Tech Tips hosted my stream for 15 minutes while I was writing about it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You go back and look at it. You can go watch it, the VOD. It's pretty ugly. I think they probably deleted it. I think Luke probably deleted it because it was so bad. I was there. I was there for that. And they started making fun of me because I was like telling them they were full of shit. <laughs> and then I started writing about it because I couldn't sleep. And then they started hosting my stream while I was writing this tirade. So it was crazy. It was some crazy shit. Luke and I ended up leaving on good on good on good terms. I haven't talked to him since then, but I, I consider myself on good terms with both of them. But I but I don't, you know. Yeah, he didn't know how to read. Yeah, I, I you know what though I I you know he 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 is Bob. But if you had seen if you'd seen that stream, I lost all respect for him in that stream. I I mean not only not only did he. I mean, I want to forgive him because he was frustrated. He was really, really frustrated. And, you know, when we get frustrated, we do dumbass things. And I always do that kind of thing. So I want to forgive him for that. But he he kind of whipped up the fan, fan the flames of his entire community, slamming on Linux people. He started attacking Linux people and Linux people making comments in the chat. And, I mean, there was one person, I, I've talked to, I've said this three times now. There was there was a few people there were a few people in the chat who said you have to be an idiot to use a terminal interface in 2012. I think those are the exact words she said or they said. And then everybody else jumped on top and they started, like, Haha, yeah, who uses a terminal in 2021? No kidding. They were saying this. They were going off. They were saying you're got to be a stupid idiot. What are you? You're either like an old boomer or you're a stupid idiot. They were like attacking people in his chat after he had just deleted his whole desktop by saying I accept responsibility exclamation point where it said you're about to delete all of your essential desktop elements you should probably not do this and he typed it anyway and then he proceeded to smack on Linux the entire time and, and I, I, I'm really going to try to give them the benefit of the doubt the night, that night I was so pissed off because I've been defending Linux, Linux my whole life they started attacking me personally, and I said bullshit. And Linus goes, "Well, that's not very nice." 
<laughs> I'm like, because he kept making claims about Linux and everything. And then Luke started making fun of me. He started personally attacking me and making fun of my comments. He started making fun of me and I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. So I, I unfollowed and I went back and I wrote a Zettelkast and which was just, it was a really, really sick personal attack on both of them. It was out of control. I was out of control. My stream was telling me, dude, you're going to regret this later. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. I was so pissed. I was so mad. Uh, did Luke pick, Luke pick Mint? Good for him. And then, and then Luke, and then somebody's like, dude, you're being streamed. Hey, Chris, welcome. They, Luke, they're like, you know you're being streamed, dude. And I'm like, we were just, we were talking about Linus Tech Tips. Somebody mentioned Linus on their own, and, and I, I just jumped on. So and that somebody was, somebody was saying that, uh, they said, did you see the stream where Linus deleted his whole Pop! OS desktop? And then he, then he installed my jar after that, couldn't get it to work either. And I actually was trying to say, I don't think we can, I, I lost respect for Linus that day, but I don't think that we can completely hold him responsible for that. That's, that's what I was trying to say. I was not trying to slam on Linus, please, people. You did, a, few, a few years ago, it was rough. <laughs> I'm, look, so the guy was frustrated. So this, I didn't want this to be about Linus, by the way. We were actually talking about Pop! OS, and then Linus came up. So that's where, that's where, that's where this came from. I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I'm not attacking Linus here. Uh, the getting out of hand, the meme culture. What, I, seriously, they actually seriously said... They seriously said the words, anybody who's using the terminal now is either a, like an old boomer or an idiot. Nobody uses the terminal anymore. It's 2021. Use a graphic interface, dumbass. That's what they were saying. They were saying that in the chat. And half of the people in the chat were there to see Linus do Linux. There were Linux people. And so the Linux people came fucking unglued. Oh, my God. They came unglued. I know. <laughs> We all know that. We all know that. But there's a certain population who watches Linus Does Tech or Linus Tech Tips who wasn't having it. It, it, was, it was insane. <laughs> oh, I haven't read that one yet. Because, because he has a voice. People listen to him. That's, that's, Bob, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you noticed that because that's what I wrote. That's what I wrote. I wrote to have somebody with such a big megaphone speak so irresponsibly about Linux without putting his Linux expert, by the way, on the show. Anthony. Anthony's fucking amazing. He's amazing. I love him. And he's just like, whenever Linus does something stupid or Luke does something stupid, Anthony's like, hmm. And he gives us that, that, like, that really kind of happy grin of his, you know, and he just kind of gives him that look. And he doesn't say, you're a dumbass, don't do that. He just smiles at him and says, well, let me show you this other way. He's just like a really great person. He's a perfect Linux advocate. I really, really like him. I'm glad they have him on their show. He's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, I don't understand why they didn't put that. Anthony, Anthony would have been there. He would have said, okay, now we don't want to delete our entire GNOME desktop right here. This is a bad thing to do. It, I feel so bad for the guys because they were so tired and they're like, fuck this. And then they can Why am I in your house? Ancient straits. Really good for the next. I don't I don't know Wendell, but I know the other guys. Look, I'm sure they're great people. And Luke Luke and I kind of, you know, buried the hatchet and we some people were giving us shit saying, Oh, I sense a new bromance. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> But we talked about that because of Pop! OS. Because this all came about because of Pop! OS. We were talking about Pop! OS. I'm going to go back, I'm gonna go back to Linux Mint. I'm going to go back to Linux Mint because they fucked up my desktop with, with Pop! OS big time. They took all of my favorite things out. Hey, Bolverstad. Welcome. They, did, they, took all the, they took all the good stuff out. Is Chris, is Chris still there? Chris, I have somebody that I'm sending to you that I mentored for six years. And... He and his partner, I think, would really be interested in your book. I really want to have him read it. Um, I, I, I was trying to tell him, I was like, go read the book, go read the book. 
Yeah, that's what I was trying to get up. Hey, Colin. Okay, so the main thing, uh, before you do anything, yeah. Linux developers to make them more user friendly. So, so, uh, hey, how's it going? Do, let me just, I just want to state this. This was not about Linus. This was about Pop! OS. Pop! OS was in the wrong. It was dumb. What Linus did was dumb. But Pop! OS was it to blame. It was the problem. I don't know if that's the video. I don't even want to relive it. If 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 you're gonna watch it, go watch it. But I don't. I'd rather. I'd hope. I hope there's no record of that because apparently they. Did they did they trim the end of it? Did they trim the end of the video where they hosted my stream while I was ranting on them? I use Pop! OS and Steam, yeah. And so far it's worked for me, but I have never hit the problem they had. But the thing that worries me about Pop! OS, and I don't know... Uh, an LTT that Anthony posted, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It wasn't Steam, though, guys. Steam, it wasn't, Steam wasn't the problem. It was Pop! OS. I don't know if I'm ready. I'm not. I don't give a shit anymore. I I wandered in there. Okay, this is this is what happened. I wandered in there while I was laying there, getting ready for bed. I was tired, and I wandered in there, and all of a sudden Linus is like slamming on Linux, and I could not sleep, and I just I just yeah. But honestly, he was right. He was right. I'm trying to tell you, he was right. I got. I'm really happy that I read about it. Because the more you read about what happened, the more you read about Pop! OS failing. And then Pop! OS, instead of fixing it, you know what they did? They hacked APT. They changed the source code to the app tool so that it doesn't give that warning anymore. So they can't even kill themselves anymore. They actually hacked the core package to do what they want. That's not the right thing to do. I, 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 and at that point, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do Pop! OS anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually put that in my blog because I'm a really paranoid person. I love Debian. Mint is Debian. Mint is Debian now. Mint is all Debian now. Yeah. So I was doing... What was I doing? I was doing... Oh, I can't remember. But but they t they changed the Pop! OS desktop and I don't like it anymore. You can't... So I wrote all about this. If you want to go read my Zettelcast and I wrote a whole thing about it. I'll probably make a video about it just because people are going to be asking. I can't do vanilla Debian. The desktop on a vanilla Debian is horrible. And I can't stream from it. If, if I do that, I might as well stream from Windows. It's no good. In fact, I'm not even sure that... I don't know. They redid Mint Desktop pretty recently too. So I don't know. I have to try Mint before I'm going to commit to it. Well, the one thing about Pop! OS you have to say that does work is shit just works. Until it doesn't. <laughs> Mandriva, I don't, I've thought about that, but I don't know. Again, I have different priorities, right? My priorities are OBS has to work out of the box. And, and if Steam works out of the box, great. But those are my main priorities. You gotta understand, OBS did not work on Mint. I had to do all kinds of hacking and shit. Same with Manjaro. When I was doing Manjaro. I thought I'd try Nix too. I, I, I could, I could, I could get into doing Nix. Yeah. I am not a Manjaro fan. You guys have not heard my story about Manjaro yet. <laughs> Chris Chris Titus and I have had the same job have had the same situation with that. Yeah, I saw it. You made your own arch, right? Right? Was it Novix? I wanna run Novix. I'm gonna run Chris's Unix. I'm gonna run Chris's Linux slash Unix slash Arch. <laughs> I think Nix will be the new Arch. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, Steam will work out of the box of Debian. Really? Hmm. Oh, we'll see about that. I, Arch is... I, it's not a question of ease of use. The reason that... Um, just dropping... Yeah, that's a part. I don't... Look, I just want to get shit done. Right? That's why I use Populous. I use Populous because I just want to get shit done. And, you know, I don't... I don't particularly... 
he, he, honestly, I, I don't dis Rahab. It's like, I don't like it. It's like, I just want shit that works. Yeah. I think OBS is suffering from that a little bit. I agree. Yeah. What, what I would, I would really love to give Nyx a shot. If you're, if I'm going to experiment with a distro, it will probably be Nyx. And now that I'm going to be streaming from multiple platforms, I think I might be able to try that. If you follow me. So right now I haven't had the luxury of experimenting on my Unix, plat on my Linux platform because on my Linux platform, I'm streaming. And it was the only thing I was streaming from. But now that I've got five different ways to stream, you know, I can stream like this. I can stream from my Mac. I can stream from the Raspberry fucking Pi. I can stream from my Windows machine when I play games. I can stream from anything. So now that I can stream from anything, I'm seriously thinking about giving NixOS a try and see, and see if I can get everything on there. Either that or Arch. I would do that or Arch. But again, you know, I like these other OSs, but, but the important thing I want beginners to know, so beginners, please listen, okay? If you're a beginner, you want to hear about the Madrano situation? <laughs> I can tell you really quick about it. Um, so if you're a beginner and you want to get into cloud native, you need, you, you have to learn APT, or you have to learn uh, Red Hat, you have to learn RPM, Apt, and Suzy. If you're gonna if you're gonna be an infrastructure engineer, you have to know how to use those things. So when Chris says she she uses Arch, that's awesome, right? But she also can do the rest of that stuff in her sleep. So I think it's really important that beginners don't immediately do what their favorite advanced streamer is doing. Because they they pick up these, they pick, oh, you should only use Arch, blah, blah, blah. And then they don't ever learn how to do basic systems administration for Linux because they, they're not using an OS that's common in the enterprise. If you're a hobbyist and or you're somebody who just wants to learn your inner workings of the kernel and shit like that, fine. Fucking build your own LFS distro, which, by the way, it's not a distro. You follow me? You know, it's like... And, and the, 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 you know... Too much different from a normal distro. NixOS is pretty damn awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it violates standards. I think. So, you know, I, I'm, people misunderstand me all the time. They think I'm slamming on Arch or I'm slamming on Nix or something like that, that I have something against them. I don't. I don't have anything against them. I'm just, I have, what, I, what I'm against is I'm against people telling beginners to use these things because, because they'll use them and then they'll get burned and then they'll go, they'll go to try to get a job and they can't get a job because they don't know how to use, they'll ask them an interview question. They'll say, so what's your experience with, with, um, you know, with installing, you know, packages and stuff. They'll ask them to do it like as a test or something. They don't have any idea how to use APT. All they know is Pac-Man. And that to me, that to me is a mistake. And I work with beginners a lot. So, so I, it, it, it is a frustration for me. I've said this many, many times. It's a pretty frequent thing. If somebody, if somebody asks you what you should learn, you should seek to understand what they want to do first. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Just, you know, don't go spewing off your favorite thing and, and tell them they have to do what you do. Seek to understand what they want to do and then tell them what you think is best for that situation. You can have an opinion. That's fine. You know? So anyway. I just wish more people would do that. There, there, so many Linux people are so into flexing as soon as somebody asks them about their distro that they don't give a shit about the person asking the question. And that bothers me. Um, Fedora. Yeah, I was on... I, I didn't... I kind of begrudgingly was on Fedora. I had Red Hat stock in 20, 2001. I sold it. I should, I should have held on to that shit. I did. Yeah, it's not as fast as other guys, so you have to understand the skills. Yeah, you do. Craft, that's well said. Nixwist is a good system if you're using on a second machine, a trial period. Exactly, Black Mouse, which is why I'm probably going to do it. Pretty bad, for, and it's pretty bad for ops people. Yeah. Yeah, I think, but isn't Nix all about containers? I think, but Black Mouse doesn't, doesn't isn't Nix all about containers, right? It's all about containerized orchestration and stuff. Am I mixing? Am I mixing them up? I'm maybe I'm mixing them up. 
I thought there was a distro that was containerized. No, maybe I'm, I'm thinking of Rancher. I think I'm thinking of Rancher. Yeah, Ran I know Rancher is a containerized distro, but it's all functional configuration. Interesting. What are you saying? He's trying to get a software junk on Golang FPGAs? I think it might be Cubes OS. I think it's it. I'm running FPGAs in Rust. Uh, I'm trying to get it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with learning Rust if you want to do it on the side, but please make sure you know a language that's going to get you a job. Showing interest in Rust does is a good thing to put on your resume. I'm not going to say it's not. But you still have to be able to do something that they can pay you for. <laughs> and right now there's not much in Rust that people will pay for. Not much. They're starting to improve, but I don't I just I fucking hate Rust syntax. So let's just leave it at that. The immutable next store and custom patched elves as far as the eye can see. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's not true. That's not true. JavaScript and, and Java, there's lots more jobs and other stuff. There's even jobs in Rust if you're willing to look like hard or move to Germany or some shit. Yeah. Fedora Silver Butt. Yeah. I, I'm kind of tired of RPM stuff. I ran Red Hat for 12 years. I ran Fedora for 12 years. Hey, Sarah. Welcome. A financial benefit to learning functional programming. I think there is. I do think there is. I think, fun first of all, I think everybody, whether they're coding a functional language or not, should cry up. So when they, when they make, when they, when they organize their code, they should either write a procedure or a function, not both. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go learn functional programming. Anyone writing code in any language will benefit from organizing their code into functions and procedures and not these Frankenstein meshes that do both that do all these have all these side effects and do all this shit and they also have a return code that they, that they need I think I think everybody could benefit all the coders in the world could benefit from thinking in terms like Pascal thinking in terms of functions or procedures you can't do both in Pascal you're forced to do one Pascal is an educational language it was developed to teach good coding practices and it, it does that very thing. It separates functions from procedures. Same thing with SQL. SQL, you have a procedure, you have a, um, functions are totally different. And I think I think thinking about them, and even if you're, you're doing JavaScript where you can smash everything together or Go or, anything, or even Rust, you know. Yeah. Those are some good, good questions, though. Yeah. Yep. View presenters at PHP doing database lookup simplicity. Ooh. What the fuck? Procedures and functions are different? <laughs> yes. Yes, Mr. C coder. Ancient, are you making fun of me? Also, methods and functions are different. Also, methods and operations are different. Yeah. It's like es esoteric coder coder things to talk about. Is this coffee you know, caffeinated? Because I still feel the caffeine buzz. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. There's actually a difference. How about this? Here's one. What's the difference between an argument and a parameter? I ask this one all the time. Nobody ever gets it. What's the difference between an argument and a parameter? ASM procedures? Uh, not really. Methods equal to peak functions. But ooh, boy, there you go. Argument is in the call. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's probably the shortest way to put it. No, nothing to do with ordering. Parameters in the function. Arg is outside. Is the is the call set object? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Thanks, Stack Overflow. <laughs> I tell this one all the time, but it's actually. So when I'm teaching like 10 year olds how to do this, so if you if you picture the function as being a machine, right? Which is like a common math thing people used to teach it. So the function, right, runtime and write time. So the function is the machine and the parameters are the labels on the slots and dials, the stuff. So pretend the machine has got, you can put stuff in there, you can change the settings, you know, you can like put something, you got all these dials on the machine, right? 
the dials are the parameters. They don't have an implicit value. They might have a default value of zero or one or something like that, but those are the parameters. The arguments are what the person at runtime sets them to. So when he goes to run the machine for one time, they like change the dials and put coins in and do all their thing. And then, and then they put run and then it runs. So the, the arguments are the things that go into the, the parameters on the machine. So if you can visualize a machine, that's what it's like. It's, it's, it's like a machine. So the, the arguments are the settings of the parameters at that moment when it runs. And I love, I love the distinction between runtime and, you know, initialization time, whatever you want to call it, compile time. What would we even call that? It's not compile time. It's compile time in Python and Perl or Ruby or something, but it's not compile. It's, it's initialization time or something. Yep. Yep. Ah, my coffee's almost done. Time for me to go do some work. I think Ruby is sexy. I like it. It's just slow. I, there's a lot of things about Ruby I really love. It's a little bit too magical for me. The, the whole accessor, the whole implicit accessor stuff, that that that's a little bit much for me. It's a little bit too magical. You know what I'm talking about? Like any attribute can, you can inject, you can inject an accessor method for any attribute whatsoever. Three plus. I haven't seen, I haven't looked at Ruby since God forever ago. I did. I use it. I was working with Matsumoto for a bit on that stuff. I worked on the AI module. Uh, Ruby's Ruby three's got to have got to compete against Crystal now though. Yeah, what's her face? Um, there's another Twitch streamer who codes. She was coding. She was doing. Um, she was doing. What's it called? Um, it used to be Hacker School. And now it's got another name. Recurse. She was doing Recurse Center in New York. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's picking up, but there's there's a lot of people who like Crystal. Crystal is like Ruby on steroids. Crystal is, is Ruby with an LVM. This is pretty much it. Crystal Crystal is Ruby with an LVM. Almost exactly the same syntax. They're like sick and tired of being left out. <laughs> so they said, hey, let's make a... It's apparently really fucking fast too. No, I've never done competitive coding. I, don't, I, have, I have no interest in competitive coding. Frankly, I have no interest in coding. <laughs> My... My only interest in coding is to make shit that I want. So about silicon, uh, right, newer silicon miners that you caught well enough. Mm, yeah. Crystal can compete with C, yeah, because it's got LLVM in it. Yep. Crystal, Crystal's not very well known, but the, I, but the fact that TJ Holloway Check started supporting it, I started to like, you gotta understand. I read Feral the Node from TJ and I got into Go in 2014 because of him. And I was like, holy shit, this language is amazing. I mean, just the concepts of it and everything. And then um, TJ started supporting Crystal like last year in his Apex project. He started writing libraries that supported Crystal and things like that. And I was like, what's Crystal? I've learned so much just by following him. He he created a domain specific language for his log gener his log query in Peg, and that's where I learned about Peg. And then I made Peg and with Brian, you know, the the riff off Brian Ford's Peg parsing expression grammar. I, every single thing that he ever that he ever even mentions, I like research it to the gills because I like it, everything. Every time I've always been really benefited. I don't know if I would consider myself a Tenx developer. I'm. I've seen 10x developers. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, you said the knobs are the parameters and the time when it runs. What are the settings equivalent to? The settings are the arguments. The settings are the arguments because they change every time you run the machine, right? The arguments are the things that go into the machine, the settings that get set, you know, I want to set all the dials to this when we run it this one time, right? When you make a call to the function or procedure. So. 10x developer just does 10 times the work of a regular developer and makes, you know, three times the money. 
and they get hired because it's easier to work with one asshole than <laughs> than ten of them. I think about R. I love R. I, I R is the language I would really get into. It's purely statistics, though. It's not machine learning. People confuse R all the time with machine learning. It's not. It doesn't have anything to do with it. R is R is basically like the world's most powerful spreadsheet. <laughs> it's like also they use they use um, rendered common mark to represent stuff. Harmless electricity until three thousand. Yeah, it's almost all stats. People confuse R with machine learning all the time. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah. R is helpful uh, languages helping corporations stealing my personal data. Yeah. Yep. It's actually not helping them steal it. It's helping them understand it. R, Python, CUDA, TensorFlow, machine learning. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's a tough, it's a tough, it's, God, it's a tough, it's a tough question. We have kind of a chicken and the egg scenario going on right now because if we want machine learning to get good, we got to give it tons of data. But we, the only data that we can, will be known as the generation that trained AI. Because as soon as they get the models really well trained, they don't need to collect the data as much anymore. But they need so much data to make those machine learning models really good that they're going to be stealing people's data f for decades, if not longer. It's kind of a normal thing. But I, the, I mean, my thought on that is that eventually they'll steal enough data to create enough open CVs or, or whatever, or, you know, that we'll have enough g general purpose models out there to do different things that, that we will be able to just use the model. We won't have to, we won't have to sacrifice our personal data anymore. If, 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 I don't know, I, I don't think privacy is going to stick around much at all. I mean, just watch Star Trek. Nobody has any privacy. <laughs> so, I think it's horrible. I don't like it, but what are you going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of beaten down lately. Cooks, Google say ML won't really be a thing. Oh, hell no. ML is being used. Dude, no. No, that is, no, I disagree. Do you think, are, I don't know. That's the real question, right? I think for natural language processing, Absolutely. That's the one that really interests me because of language interest, right? You know, I'm really interested in languages and stuff. So, I I think that they're gonna at some point they're gonna get enough natural language processing data to be able to do a model that will do any any text to speech, and then they'll just have to update it with current vocabulary. I I think we're gonna hit a point at which natural language. AI models are good enough that they don't need data any further for those. I I wrote Pagan from scratch, but it was based on another another language. I actually wrote Pagan so I could write languages. P E G N dot dev. <clears throat> it's a it's a it's a meta language for writing other languages. If I could get paid to do anything. I would just make languages. Honestly. Nobody wants to pay for that, though. Oh, I know. OCaml. I, I've been wanting to look at OCaml, too. The only problem is it's just so small talky, I hear. Is it a meta language? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm into... I'm really into parsing. I am. I, I, I'm not... I'm not nearly, because I'm self-taught, so I don't have anywhere near the level that like a master student would have in parsing, but I fucking love parsing. I love it. Yeah, domain-specific languages. I think we need to get faster at creating domain-specific languages. I think, I think there's still a desire for, for, for that kind of work, actually. I think Stephen Wolfram would agree too. He's kind of like trying to put the brakes on ML. He's like, people, ML doesn't solve everything. We still need algorithms for things. And one of those things would be parsing languages. Right? Pure procedural language. I don't know how you would do that. I don't know how you would do that. I 
dropped an offer for a company to create a DSL for their stuff? Really? That's sad. Did you like it though? I mean, what was going on? Did you drop it because it just wasn't satisfying? Blowstuff? Into, into a fast compiler and it'll be the fine in the other. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. The one thing in Python I haven't done that I really want to do is I want to write I want to write a C stubbed uh, library, but you don't need to do it now with Go and Rust and Crystal and Julia and everything else. That's C compatible. You know, to be a single DevOps for the whole department. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Speaking of that, I gotta go. go I gotta go start working on stuff. And it was the bank. Yeah, the bank still is with the money, man. We're not looking at NFT art. No, I'm not doing NFT. No. Me after no poop to come in. No poop to come I'm going to go work. So I'm going to take y'all in the other room. Uh... I'm going to be smashing um, Helm charts today. I am not interested in the NFT torrent. No, I do. I need to go work. Right. So I'll be. I'll meet you guys in the, the other room here. Twenty terabytes? You fucking kidding me? Everybody wants to get in on the NFT bandwagon. They're like, oh, NFT this, NFT that. Yeah, I, I mean, I I watched I watched Vegan Bots videos for a bit. Vegan Bot was Vegan Bot was doing the whole NFT thing. Jim, you guys know Vegan Bot. Right? I haven't heard from him in a while. Yeah, the stream is just gonna be. Uh, I just need to. Fire it up. Watch how fast. Watch how fast this is. He's been a bit away for a while, but he um he 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 came back to do NFT stuff. The new place is looking awesome. <laughs> you mean it's a, like a huge disaster? It's like a huge fucking disaster. He made a stock exchange for Twitch users? No way. How's it going from Argentina? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You want to see the retro term? Do you need to turn the retro term back on? All right, let me switch streams right here really quick. I should probably change my topic too. Let me change my topic real quick. I'll be right with you. You yeah, like the, the retro term's pretty fucking nice. I have to admit, I like it. Oh, thanks for that. Thank you, thank you. Um. Do 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 do. Chris had thirty one viewers when she raided. I wish I would have got the raid notification. That would have that would have been cool. I didn't get it. I did not get it. You're running code? I am running code. Lol. Uh, give, me, give me a break here. Uh, video capture device filters are off. Close. And I am... Oh wait, I have to cancel this one. I'll be right back. I'll be, I'll be in seconds. I should be seconds. See how fast I can do this. Already. All right, ready, stop.